This is Coach Lee, and in this video, I'm going to answer the question, should you flirt with your ex? And if so, how? Take a quick second, click the subscribe button below so that you can be notified when I have more content that's helpful to your situation, which includes attraction, mindfulness, relationships, marriage, and breakups. So a lot of people who've been broken up with will find a video of mine, and it talks about no contact and how you should leave your ex alone and actually give them the breakup. And in my emergency breakup kit, which is linked to in the description below, if you're on YouTube, I talk a lot about what's going on in the mind and the heart of your ex during this time. I also have videos, for example, stages your ex goes through after a breakup and the mind of your ex during no contact and what your ex is feeling during no contact. I'll link to those videos in the description below as well. But if you've watched my videos, you know how important it is to give your ex the breakup, to leave them alone, and to not go after them, to not pursue them or chase them or look like you're trying to get them back. And really, no contact is a way of trying to get them back, but it's also a way of making you stronger so that if they don't come back, you're stronger. But you're also giving yourself the best chance of getting them back for many reasons that I won't go in in this video just because I go into them in a lot of other videos and that's not what this video is directly about. But when people realize that they have to back off, they can't seem interested as far as initiating things that would suggest that, initiating contact, and that it's important to give your ex the breakup, people will think mistakenly that they need to be cold, not true, or that they need to ignore their ex if and when their ex reaches out, which is a little bit of a pet peeve of mine because it's just wrong. Other coaches will say, ignore your ex, don't respond when they reach out. But if you want them back, you should. Your goal is to get them to move towards you, to initiate, and you don't want to kill that momentum. I have other videos on that and I talk about that a lot. But the key here is that a lot of people tend to think they need to be on the colder side. And so when they do get to be face to face with their ex, when their ex has contacted them and the two of you have talked and things seem to be going pretty well, and one of you suggests getting together or you are texting more, the question becomes, should I flirt with my ex? And if so, how? And a lot of people tend to think maybe they shouldn't flirt with their ex. They think, well, Coach Lee talks about no contact and not chasing and all this, and so I shouldn't flirt. I should just act neutral. Well, that's not what you should do. You actually should flirt. Here's why. You don't want to become just a friend, right? I've talked about that in other videos, that becoming a friend, accepting friendship is actually dangerous. It's detrimental to your efforts, to wanting your ex back. If you want them back, you shouldn't be demoted to a friend. It's a low ball offer. And the best way not to be a friend is not to act like a friend. In other words, a neutral, platonic friend acts a certain way, whereas someone who is interested in the other person acts another way, or at least they should. Because going after what you want is what strong people do, emotionally strong people. It's an attractive thing. It's being true to yourself. And that's what you should be doing. Now, no contact is actually going after what you want because you want to be attractive. You want self-respect, you want strength, and you want that to be recognized by your ex and you want to reattract them because you don't want to go after this person when they're not wanting to be with you. Hopefully it's temporary, but at this moment, they're not receptive. And so you would be wasting your time because you can't make someone come back to you if they don't want to. And so you have to recharge that. You have to reignite what they felt for you. And when they start moving towards you, you can do something to where basically you show that you're interested and that this is how you interact with them. You will not interact like a friend. This is what you two have. This is the connection that you two have and it's amazing. And it goes beyond the breakup. It still exists, even though it's limited at the moment, but you are attracted and interested in them and you're not afraid to show it. Now you may be wondering, but I thought I was supposed to maybe look like I was interested in moving on or at least giving them the fear of loss. I understand. You are. You will be. I'm not suggesting you tell them, I want you back. I'm not suggesting that you start doing things that you know I would tell you not to do, like beg or plead 
or initiate contact, you're still letting them come to you. And when they do, they're going to know that you are not a platonic relationship in their life, that you are not just a friend, that you're not afraid to be interested in them, and that you're not going to force the issue at the same time. One example I give in one of my videos is where a guy and a girl met for coffee after she had dumped him and he had gone into no contact. She had reached out and they had gotten together for coffee and she was trying to play the, you know, we're just friends, which they might pitch friendship when they're moving closer back towards you. Mostly they want to slow things down. They want to be sure they don't want to get your hopes up. And in some ways it's also a little bit of a power trip an ego stroke because they want to be the one to tell you that. And it's important that you act like you don't believe them. So if they were to say, you know, we're just friends, right? Be playful about it. You could even be sarcastic. Like I've said in other videos, sometimes it's good to go, oh yeah, best buddies. Just playful like that. Like you don't really believe it. A lot of times you'll get a little laugh from them or a smile. I told one guy if that happened, if she said that, for him to smirk at her and say, yeah, right. And that takes a certain personality. I'm not suggesting everyone should do that, but it worked pretty well, actually. It was an attractive thing to do. It was a strong thing to do. It was a confident thing to do. It wasn't begging and pleading and lowering yourself and begging for mercy. It was actually a confident thing to do. And it was flirty. And that's kind of how you should flirt with them. You should flirt with your ex as though you know better than the breakup. You know they're interested in you. And you know this is all going to work out and you're not going to rush it. As a matter of fact, if they don't move fast enough, if they don't get their act together, you might move on. So this is kind of like the 2.0 version because this is when your ex has moved towards you. They have initiated contact. You two have started having some face-to-face -face time or at least you're texting back and forth. For example, if you're in isolation at home and you're texting back and forth with this person or having FaceTime or Skype talks. The breakup has not changed you. You should not let it appear that way. Now, let me clarify that. Yes, you're stronger and you're better in those ways. It has changed you if you need it to change. Sometimes you just need to show the other person who you really are. But what has not changed is how you two connect. They need to know that, that you know better, you understand them better than anyone else, and you don't really believe that they just wanna be friends. That right there is flirty in itself. But being playful, joking, even suggesting that they're trying to make a move on you or that they're trying to kiss you and you can do little playful things like that where you even tell them, let's just slow down. Or, goodness, buy me a drink first. Just something playful like that where you're suggesting that they really want you. But you're being playful about it so it doesn't look like that you are trying to do something awkward or that you're being awkward or socially out of touch, you're being playful and you're not afraid to suggest that. It will actually not only be attractive because they'll look at you and think that you're strong and that you're not afraid to do all this and you're showing confidence, all these things that are attractive, but also it will give them something to think about as though here I am meeting with this person who I broke up with, maybe I really still am wanting them. Maybe she's right. Maybe he's right in suggesting I want them back. Maybe I really do. Because a lot of times your ex won't really think that far ahead. They just know they want to see you. They don't know what that means. They just want to see you and be around you. And they don't know yet if they want you back. It's not always this flick of a switch or a snap of a finger. As a matter of fact, it's usually not. It's usually a slow movement towards you. Reaching out being after several stages have been completed inside of them. Relief, getting into wondering about you and curiosity, being afraid that you're moving on. There's all kinds of things that have to happen before, usually before they reach out to you. So you retain the frame that this is not a person that you just want to be friends with, that you are interested in them, that you are attracted to them, and you're not afraid of that. At the same time, you're not going to give away your dignity. You're not going to beg or plead or even talk about relationship stuff right now. You're going to have an assumption about you that this is just a temporary thing that they know they want to be with you. You two are going to end up together and you're not worried about it, which is the ultimate confidence. Now, how you portray that lots of different ways to do that. 
If you keep that mindset that it's going to be playful, it's going to be light, it's going to be fun, and you're not going to try to get a label back on the relationship right away, you're not going to try to lock the other person down, you're not going to try to get them back all at once, that you're confident enough that it can move slowly. And you're not worried about that and you will be playful and flirty because this is who they are to you. This is who the two of you are together. This is the connection you have. And the breakup cannot change that. Nothing in this universe can change that. That kind of thing. And that you are not afraid that you two won't get back together. That you know better. Check out my emergency breakup kit. The link is in the description below. And it's the culmination of 20 years in the relationship coaching service. It's a powerful guide to getting your ex back. And click the subscribe button so that you can be notified when I have more videos like this. You might be surprised that when you're flirty with your ex, that they are often flirty back. It's comfortable. It's fun. And if they're actually initiating and moving towards you, then they probably were wanting that to happen, even if they couldn't put it into words or didn't know for sure. And so they're enjoying it. And you two are having this great interaction together. This gives you a wonderful opportunity to cut things short. You have to go. You have to get off the phone. You have to close FaceTime. But it was great seeing you. Let's talk soon. That kind of thing. So that you are the one who cuts it short. You're the one who's needed elsewhere. You have other things to do. Because what you don't want to happen is a lull in the conversation where it becomes small talk and it looks like you're trying to just keep it going and going because you can't get enough of them. You want it to be somewhat short and sweet. It doesn't have to be two minutes, but it does need to be where you are the one to end it. Sometimes it won't happen and they jump you on that and say, hey, I got to go. That's okay. Sometimes you can't predict that. Just say, oh yeah, no problem. We'll talk soon and go ahead and get off the phone. Or if you're face to face, leave or decide you want to order another cup of coffee. Patience shows a lot of strength. Being able to treat something with humor and lightheartedness shows confidence. Getting back into some of the dynamic that you two used to share, but that isn't serious and potentially awkward and could be moving too fast with them, can be the perfect recipe to really get them feeling what we need them to feel to want to make a faster progress as far as getting back together fully with you. But just know, if you don't get it all on that first meetup, that first face-to-face, -face, you can still make progress. You can still be reattracting them. You can still show them who you are and how strong you are and how confident you are and playful and fun you are to be around and it will help them feel that dynamic again give them something to think about when you two are apart and it can be very helpful to getting your ex back so flirting with your ex is a great thing just keep it light playful and fun if you can make them laugh which usually if you had a lengthy relationship with this person and a good connection you know how to do that that's powerful too what we don't want to turn it into is you talking about the relationship, asking them how they're feeling, do you think we'll get back together? All those things that I tell you not to do in other videos, it's very important. Let them be the one to bring that up. Go into this in a lot more detail in my emergency breakup kit. And you can get more information on that in the link in the description below. Click the subscribe button below so you can be notified when I have more videos. Please click the like button. This has been Coach Lee, and as always, thank you for watching.